Want a place where your child can get excited about learning about God? Children's Ministry at Good Hope is a place where your child will be taught to love God, love all people, and change the world through age-appropriate activities, interactive worship, sports, music, and art. Through our Gospel Project Sunday Worship, weekly Awana Bible Clubs, Upward Sports League, and Summer Vacation Bible School, your child will be ministered to year-round. Remember, your child is a gift from God. Have you ever made a decision, look back at that decision after a period of time and thought to yourself, man, what was on my mind when I made that decision? In other words, when you made the decision, it seemed like a good decision, but later on, you look back and said, oh my God, what was I thinking about? I'm Dr. D.Z. Cofield, Senior Pastor of the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Word of Hope Ministries. If you've ever had that moment of realization after you made a decision, that hindsight is 2020 vision, you experienced what the prodigal experienced when he got to the place about to eat the slop intended for the hogs, and the text says he came to himself. Today, as we continue our look at the subject restoration, a love that welcomes you back, I want to help you experience a coming to yourself. Let's get to our message. The Bible says this boy was so hungry that the slop looked delectable. The slop became desirable. And here's what I want you to know. Whenever you make a decision, to move away from God, you will find yourself, watch this, entertaining doing what you said you would never do. Matter of fact, let me put a cord in the meter and park right there. Because for somebody, the true test of whether or not you are where you are supposed to be is whether or not you are doing what you said you would never do, going where you said you would never go, and engaging in what you said you would never engage in because that kind of behavior was beneath you when you were close to God, but it's become a lifestyle now that you've moved away from God. I know I'm preaching. It's, it's that comfort, listen carefully, with a lifestyle that when it was initially engaged in was shocking to your spirit. It was troubling to your soul. But now it's just part of who you are. God says you have moved so far away from home, you've gotten so far away from him that now you are comfortable in your ungodliness. The prodigal here reaches the lowest point possible. He had moved far away from God. Listen to me carefully. Sin promises freedom, but all it brings is enslavement. 
You were waiting to turn 18 or 21 so you could be grown and do whatever you wanted to do and have fun. And all you have brought upon yourself in many instances is pain. Look at John 8, 34. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Underline that phrase, slave of sin. Sin promises success, but sin brings sorrow and suffering. Sin promises delight, but the Bible says sin doesn't bring delight, but for a season, but it ultimately brings death. Look at Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you imagine working a job? And when you get your paycheck, your pay stub, or you get your direct deposit, and you check it out, and you didn't get paid as much as you thought you were going to get paid, how do you feel about that? Like your check is short, like 50%. You're like, oh, no, we're going to get this right. (laughs) Right today, you're going to get this right. Hey, hey, what's going on? My check is short. Now, if you think you would feel bad about that, Imagine expecting to get paid, and when you get your check, your check says death. Because that's what the writer says, the wages of sin, the payment for your sin is not pleasure, it's death. See, the boy left home thinking he would find himself, but he didn't realize when he left home he was going to lose himself. And for somebody in here, the reason this is important is because you're not in the hog pen, but you're hog pen bound. You may not be in the hog pen, but you're on your way to the hog pen. What you have failed to understand is hog pen as a destination doesn't have to be asked for, you will subtly slip into the way that results in you showing up and arriving at the hog pen. See, let me tell you what the hog pen represents. The hog pen represents a change in your life so that what was once a conviction now becomes the place of a compromise. The hog pen represents behavior that for most of your time you would never think about doing. Now it has become commonplace. And we don't understand that the things we participate in, they will lead us if we're not careful to the hog pen. Can I go down the list for a minute? Adultery will lead you to the hog pen. Uncontrolled anger will lead you to the hog pen. Backbiting will lead you to the hog pen. Gossiping will lead you to the hog pen. Drugs will lead you to the hog pen. Drunkenness will lead you to the hog pen. You're getting real quiet. I think I'm talking about you. (laughs) Envy will lead you to the hog pen. Fornication will lead you to the hog pen. Greed will lead you to the hog pen. Homosexual behavior will lead you to the hog pen. Lying will lead you to the hog pen. Pride will take you to the hog pen. Stealing will take you to the hog pen. Ungodly, unrighteous living will lead you to the hog pen. And if you're not there, you're on the way. You're on the express train. To the hog pen. And see, here's what I want you to understand. You, you know, when somebody gets caught doing wrong, and, and, and some people will look and say, wow, man, I never would have thought that about that person. Here's what you need to realize. When a person gets caught doing wrong, it's typically not the first time they did wrong. It's just the first time they got caught doing wrong. And when you do wrong so long that you start thinking wrong is right or wrong is feeling right. When the shock of sin is no longer present in your life. 
when conviction is gone to the place that you can sin and you're not even worrying about praying and asking for forgiveness. I know I'm right. God says you are on the way to the hog pen. And and I might just throw this in parenthetically before we move on. Listen, just because you can function doesn't mean you're not in the hog pen. Just because you look good doesn't mean you're not in the hog pen. Everybody who's in the hog pen doesn't have to smell like a hog. I told you, number one, you need to figure out where you are. Where are you? Here's the second thing. Number two, you need to make a change in your life in order to get where you want and need to be. You need to make a change in your life in order to get to where you want and need to be. I want you to circle that word change. You filled it in, but circle that. Because change is something that most of us don't embrace. We don't embrace change because change means something different. And we are creatures of habit, some of us more than others. So we don't have an adventurous spirit in us. We, we're not into trying new things. We're good exactly where we are, and we will get settled into a known bad rather than to open ourselves up to explore and experience a potential good. Look at verse 17, Luke 15. When he finally came to his senses, (laughs) underline that, came to his senses, he said to himself, at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. He came to his senses. Uh, He literally experiences a moment of repentance, a moment of clarity, where he finally sees Here's where I am, but how did I get here? He came to himself, which suggests that when he left the father's house, he wasn't in his right mind. He left not in his right mind, and when he got to the hog pen, about to eat the slop intended for the hogs, he came to himself. He had a moment of realization, of revelation. This temporary insanity had now passed. Listen to me. It took a change of mind that brought him out of the father's house. It took a change of mind that took him to the hog pen. And it would take a change of mind to get him out. So let me stop here for a moment and say a couple of things. You will never be able to bring somebody out of the hog pen of their life until they come to themselves and recognize they're in a bad place. Somebody in here, you have family members. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But you have family members who are in a bad place, and you have tried, you have talked until you were blue in the face, you have spent money, you have invested time trying to get them out, and even when you manage to convince them to come out, they go right back in. And you're like, what is wrong with you? Have you lost your mind? Yes. (laughs) They have. Because watch this. Like this prodigal, they are not in their right mind. And for somebody in here, let's not talk about somebody else. Look in the mirror. Lord, have mercy. There's somebody in here, you are in a place you should not be, and you can look in the mirror right now and say, how'd I get here? How'd I end up here? What got me here 
with a man that I never would have looked twice at. Or with a woman that I would have never spent any time with when I was in my right mind. What did it take for this boy to come to himself? I don't know. Maybe it was the presence of the pigs or the smell of the slop. You know, sometimes it's a scent can just trigger you. A song can just trigger you. It just seems like you wake up one morning and say, you know, wait, wait, what? Wait a minute, who? Where am I and how did I get here? And now that I know where I am, how quick can I get out of this? This prodigal says, I'm out here hungry. I'm entertaining eating slop. And my father has servants, and the servants have food to spare. I am the son, and I'm starving, and the servants have food left over. He says, I'm going to go back to my father and tell my father, I'm not worthy to be your son. Just make me a hired servant. Look at Romans 2, 4. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Somebody needs to highlight that whole verse. Because basically, here's what Paul is saying. Your sin is not a secret to God. And don't take his silence as if he is approving. And realize that while you are getting by with it, you are not getting away with it. That God is simply being patient, trying to give you time to come to your senses. God is trying to give you time to recognize you are where you shouldn't be. Come to yourself so that you can make the moves you need to make to get where you need to be. See, it was the son's painful circumstances that helped him to get a better view of his father. He didn't even appreciate his father and what he had until it was gone. He didn't think about all that the father had until he got in the far country, lost everything, money gone, friends walked out, nobody to help him, famine walks in, and a slopping hog is about to be his table mate. What will it take for you to come to your senses? Will on the way to the hog pen be enough to get you to turn around or do you have to go to the hog pen before you say enough is enough? You see, this boy really exhibits for us, this younger son, what true repentance is. Because true repentance is not just saying I'm sorry or I'm sorry for getting caught, right? True repentance entails an apology linked with a change in attitude and actions. It says, not only I'm sorry for what I have done, but I make a commitment not to do it again, and then I'm going to display that commitment in the change in how I behave. And there's somebody in here, you've been apologizing too much and acting too little. That's why folk don't want to hear your apology anymore. Because every time you turn around, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, change. They're looking at you saying, change. We don't want no no more sorry. No no, no more apologies. No more, I ain't going to never do it again. That's happened. You done said that about 30 times. We don't want to hear that no more. Matter of fact, don't even apologize. Just change. Save the breath for the change. Just change. Do what you need to do to change. This Boy, this younger son made a change because he had a change in his attitude. 
and a change in his attitude precipitated a change in his actions. Look at 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. You've heard the saying, the road to hell is paved with what? Good intentions. God says, I don't want intentions that are not matched with behavior. Acts 20, verse 21. Let's read it together. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repenting from sin and turning to God. It's not enough to just repent because if you repent and stay where you are, then you'll fall back to, into what you were about to fall into before. Let me give you an example. If this younger son said, you know what, I, man, I'm, I can't stay here in the hog pen, but he never packed his bags to go back home, eventually he would have to eat the slop that he wanted to reject in the first place. Am I making sense to somebody? You don't ever want to stay in the hog pen or even in the vicinity of the hog pen, when you make a decision to leave the hog pen or hog pen people, make sure you pack and leave in a hurry. And if you want to fellowship with folk in the hog pen, make sure that you give them your forwarding address so they can leave the hog pen to find you instead of you staying close enough to go back and visit them. Acts 20, verse 21, we said there's one message, one message. Repent from sin, turn to God, have faith in Jesus. I want to draw your attention back to Romans chapter 2, verse 4, because I think for somebody today, that's going to help you in this come to yourself moment. In Romans chapter 2, verse 4, the New Living Translation reads, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? For somebody today, you think because God has allowed you to get away with it that you have gotten a pass, or because you've been able to do it over and over again, that somehow God approves. And you need to understand, God gives you time. God exercises towards you patience to give you more time to get it right, not to give you more time to do wrong. God is not approving of your wrong. He is simply giving you time to make it right, to make a change in your life. Now, what does it take to spark you to come to yourself. Maybe it's that moment when you wake up in a place you shouldn't have been sleeping. Look up and say, how did I get here? Maybe it's a song, maybe it's a scent, maybe it's a specific location. Whatever it is, maybe it's the Word of God, maybe it's this Word today that God is using to help you to come to yourself. See, you know what God wants you to do. It's not like God hasn't told you. It's not like God hasn't shown you. It's not like God hasn't used other people in your life to say, what in the world are you doing? There you go, trying to justify it. There you go, having an explanation, making excuses, and God says, enough is enough. I will not bless you until you make a decision to make the commitment to me. Thus says the Lord, make the change, make the change, come to yourself so that now in coming to yourself, you can look back and say, you know what? I was in a bad place when I made that decision, but guess what? I'm no longer in a bad place, so I can't continue to stay where I am. We'll be back to close in just a moment. The Holy Land. Join Dr. D.Z. Cofield and Heavenly Matched Christian Travel, November 27th through December 8th. 
pray at the Wailing Wall, walk the final steps of Jesus to the cross along the Via Della Rosa, sail on the Sea of Galilee, get baptized in the Jordan River, and many more historic sites. For more information, call Ron Ward at 713-520-8095. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime trip to the Holy Land. As we close today's show, let me give you a very, very simple principle that you need to live by. It's not enough to simply say, I'm in a bad place. If you haven't said it, I'm sure you've heard somebody say it. Man, I'm in a bad place, but at least I'm honest. I'm not trying to hide it. Or you know, this is just the way I am, but hey, at least I'm willing to admit it. Here's what you need to understand. Admitting that you're in a bad place and not doing anything to change it only heightens the punishment for the sin of commission that you are practicing. In other words, I've done wrong. Now I admit that I've done wrong. So God says, now you are accountable because you know you are doing wrong and you haven't done what you need to do to get right. It's not enough to just say, I'm in a bad place. God says, now you've got to make a decision with the knowledge that you have. If you know you're in a bad place, what do you need to do to move to get to a good place? What change do you need to make? And that's really the power of repentance. That's what distinguishes repentance from sorrow. Sorrow says, man, listen, I feel bad that I am where I am. But that sorrow does not necessitate, require, or even suggest that I'm going to make a change. Repentance is sorrow plus change. It's the willingness to say, you know what, I'm not where I need to be, and I'm going to do my best never to be here again. And that's what God wants from you. If you are going to experience the restorative power of God's love, you've got to make a change in where you are so you can get to where God wants you to be. Good Hope would like to invite you to attend our Bible study Wednesday at noon, corporate prayer at 6.30 p.m. and Bible study at 7 p.m. Care is provided in the evening for children ages three years old to fifth grade. For more information, call us at 713-524-6578 or visit us online at goodhope.org. Dr. D.Z. Cofield explores pain in the raw. Man, those broken promises can be devastating. Dr. D.Z. Cofield digs in where others shy away. I mean, there's people right now who are grown, who still live with the scar of a broken promise of a dad who said, I'm going to come pick you up. Watch Dr. D.Z. Cofield on The Cube, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and Sundays at 6.30 a.m.